Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will go through osteology of radius. The radius is the lateral bone of the forearm. It is a long bone because it has two ends, the shaft in between the two ends. Anatomical position and side determination. Upper end has a disc shaped head. So this is the upper end, it is disc shaped. Neck and radial diversity just medial to the head here. The lower end is broader than the upper end. This is broader than the upper end. The stider process projects from lateral surface to the lower end and it will direct the side of the side, side it belongs. It is going to the left side. So this is the left radius. Okay. The dorsal tubercle is present on the posterior aspect of the lower end of the radius. So dorsal tubercle on the posterior surface of the lower end is directed backward. So if you just make it large, if you go there, so this is the anatomical position here. Okay, this is the head circular with upper part little bit concavity. Okay, this is the neck. This is the radial tuberosity here. This is the radial tuberosity. Okay, this is the radial tuberosity here. Radial tuberosity. Okay, then this is the shaft. This is the lower end. Lower end, we have the lateral prolongation. This is the radial styloid process. Here, we go to the dorsal part, or posterior part, we'll get the tubercle of Lischer. Okay. Okay, upper end, we just discussed the articular facet for capitulum. This is covered by hyaline cartilage. This is the neck, radial tuberosity. Oblique line, oblique line from the radial tuberosity, we can easily find out. Radial tuberosity, if you go obliquely here, going down, this is the this is the oblique line and this is the posterior view of the of the proximal and upper end of the radius if you go here this is same we have a for the opening for the newton foramen here on the anterior surface you get the opening for the for the newton foramen roughening for attachment of the pontoteris muscle insert here okay on the middle of the lateral part of the radius okay we got that this is the insertion of pronator teres okay we got that this is the oblique line we'll get the origin of a muscle there is the flexor digital superficial this will go to the image very soon okay this is the head neck here this is the radial diversity posteriorly Insertion of biceps brachii, anteriorly it is separated by a bursa. Okay, these are the borders. Interosseous border is the most important border and that is very much prominent. Sharp, inter other borders are distinct partly. This is the anterior border, here oblique line from here. Got the anterior border going down here. Okay, then if we go on the lower part of the radius here, the anterior surface, posterior surface has the dorsal tubercle of Lister. If you go to the inferior surface, you get two facets, the triangular facet for the scaphoid, the semilunar or quadrangular facet for the lunate muscle. So this is the facet for the scaphoid, this is the facet for the lunate muscle. We got that. So we have anterior border posterior border interosseous border surface anterior surface posterior surface lateral surface anterior surface between the anterior border and interosseous border this is the anterior border interosseous border this is the anterior surface okay then posterior sur surface between the interosseous border and the post between the interosseous border and the posterior border. 
okay that is posteriorly i have not seen here nicely okay then lateral surface between the anterior border and the posterior border so we have three border three surfaces among the border the interosseous border or medial border is more distinct shaft has three surfaces we just discussed newton Froman is present in the upper part of the anterior surface and this is directed towards the towards the head of the radius and the lower part of the radius is the growing end okay we got that so newton foramen usually a branch of the anterior interosseous artery anterior interosseous artery is a branch of the it is a branch of the anterior interosseous artery is a branch of the common interosseous artery common interosseous artery is a branch of the ulnar artery ulnar artery is a branch of the brachial artery okay there is a continuation of the axillary artery we know that part lower end we just discussed we have five surfaces lateral surface is projected downward as stylet process we call it a radial stylet process this part this is the radial stylet process middle surface bears a smooth notch for the ulna this is the ulna notch lower part of the ulna is articulated here so this is the ulna ulna lower part we articulated here this is the ulna, ulna notch here okay we got the inferior surface articulated with the scaphoid and lunate so we have the triangular area the okay so we have that triangular area here for the scaphoid scaphoid here and this area for the lunate the quadrangular or semilunar area for lunate triangular area for the for the scaphoid okay we got that now in posterior surface has the dorsal tubercular blister that is very important okay that is the dorsal tubercular blister this is that this is the dorsal tubercular blister and dorsal tubercular blister just medial to that we have a the depression group for the passage of the extensor pollicis longa standard okay that is going on the medial aspect for the medial side of the medial side of the let me try here okay this is the dorsal tubercle this is the lateral side this is the medial side in in this position okay medial aspect there is a group for the extensor pollicis extensor pollicis longus group here there is a group just medial to the tubercular dorsal tubercular blister okay we got that okay so again this is are the images we have multiple joints is formed by the radius the radius ulna superior radial nerve joint inferior radial nerve joint inferior radial nerve joint superior radial nerve joint these are pivot type of synovial joint the radius also articulate with the capitulum of the radius is a part of the capitulum of the of the humerus is a part of the elbow joint the elbow joint is a hinge type of synovial joint the joint between the radius and ulna through the interosseous membrane to the interosseous border that is the fibrous joint we call it syndesmosis there is aperture for the interosseous artery here okay for the anterior interosseous artery okay we got that so this is the nutrient foramen here this is the growing end is nutrient foramen okay insertion of muscle biceps brachii posterior part of the radial tuberosity okay that should be posterior part of the radial tuberosity we have supernatural muscle here from the lateral aspect from the from the lateral aspect okay pronator teres in the middle in the lateral aspect pronator quadratus anteriorly 
anteriorly on the lower one fourth area there is insertion of quadratus frontal quadratus brachioradialis near the stylar process on the lateral aspect origin of muscle anteriorly flexor digit trunk superficial is along the oblique line here along the oblique line then we'll get the flexor pollicis longus from anterior two third area below the oblique line then we'll get posteriorly origin of the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis posteriorly okay we got that so we have five muscle insertion four muscle origin from the radius okay now if you go there this is the supranatural muscle supranatural muscle is inserting here supranatural muscle is inserting here supranatural okay so this is the pronotal teres again lateral aspect this is the brachioradialis insertion okay and anteriorly if you go there and the by the tuberosity radial tuberosity insertion of the biceps brachii muscle this is the insertion of the pronotal quadratus insertion of the brachioradialis origin of the flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum superficialis muscle okay so if you go again to that place here origin of flexor digitorum superficialis flexor pollicis longus abductor pollicis longus action pollicis brevis four origin okay if you go again there we have four origin one abductor pollicis longus posterior aspect action pollicis brevis posterior aspect okay anteriorly we have the flex digitans superficialis and the flexor pollicis longus four muscle origin insertion we have five muscle insertion biceps brachii supranatal parietal teres parietal quadratus and brachioradialis we'll find out them again not a problem at all okay insertion of the bicep brachii posterior part of the radial tuberosity separated by a bursa okay we got that one then here lateral aspect insertion of the supranatal muscle then on the lateral aspect the mid middle of the shaft the parietal teres we got three okay then anteriorly lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the radius insertion of the parietal quadratus it takes origin from the ulna insert here big insertion small origin okay then this is the brachioradialis muscle insertion now get the nerve supply brachioradialis nerve supply radial nerve parietal quadratus nerve supply by the median nerve okay by the anterior drosis branch of the median nerve okay flexor pollicis longus median nerve flexor digitum superficialis median nerve supranatural muscle nerve supply by the posterior interosseous nerve or deep branch of the radial nerve okay biceps brachii innervation by the musculocutaneous nerve we got that abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis to muscle here taking origin nerve supply from the posterior interosseous nerve okay we got that now here we got the muscle again here and this is the articular surface here and we have the annular ligament should be attached here okay and this is the interosseous membrane this is the muscle okay this is muscle insertion muscle origin here okay if we go to the previous page again this is the flexor pollicis longus okay this is the flexor pollicis longus going through a groove medial to the dorsal tubercle this is dorsal tubercle this is the tendon going flexor pollicis longus tendon okay this is the tubercle the dorsal tubercle of lister we got that okay now ligaments with the neural ligament around that radial collateral ligament of the elbow joint we have also radial collateral ligament of the 
the wrist joint of the cord interosseous membrane lateral ligament of the wrist joint articular disc of the inferior nerve joint palmar and dorsal radiocarpal ligament capsule ligament of the wrist joint extensor retinal column that keep the tendon for the dorsum of the hand they are attached to the radius as well as to the ulna ossification one primary center of ossification on the eighth week of intrauterine life for the shaft the lower end ossifies from a secondary center appear during the first year fuses in the 20th year so this is the growing end okay the newton from end is facing towards the towards the upper part but the lower part is the is the is the growing part lower end is the growing end of the bone the upper end ossifies from secondary center appear during the fourth year and fuses with the 18th year okay there may be some variation in female it may be 16 year in female okay we got that here also 16 year in female okay maybe 16 to 18 year in female but this is the growing end there is some variation depending on nutrition and the sex of the individual okay so this is the ligament we are looking at the neural ligament here okay under collateral ligament radial collateral ligament we got that ligament here also under collateral ligament radial collateral ligament we have the dorsal carpometacarpal ligament we should have palmar carpometacarpal ligament we have the articular disc also present between between the ulna in the wrist joint and the carpal bone ulna lower end ulna and the carpal bone okay we got that now clinical anatomy is very important to us okay we call it nurse maid's elbow or pulled elbow or subluxation of the head of the radius usually child hand is in prone position then sudden jerking is done for the baby to get rid of some obstacle or just helping him to go to the bus okay so what will happen their head is not circumference is not nicely developed because they are usually around five or six years old maybe girl okay so there may be dislocation of the head and head is going to there okay so the child will keep in prone position to the chest and it will be painful it can be gradually placed by gradually supining but keeping the, the elbow joint flexed okay so nourishment elbow police fracture falling on outstretched hand okay speed fracture calling on on the dorsal of the hand the other side of the colis fracture okay we got that now we'll go here here is that this is the colis fracture this person is fallen outstretched hand usually a postmenopausal or perimenopausal perimenopausal women with some osteoporosis more common this fracture but men may have also colis fracture this fracture is a fracture line style pressure process to go up, up okay so this is the fracture line okay style process of this and this is ulna is almost same level usually it is a bit lower okay this fracture may be associated with dislocation of the or damage to the scaphoid or lunar bone okay this is the line of fracture and the person typically shows a dinner fork deformity it is manageable by cast and manipulation okay and that's all about the osteology of the radius if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and please support my channel please subscribe me have a nice and blessed day bye now